Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today for today's webinar to learn about Cloudflare load balancing for monitoring origin server health and automatic failover. Uh, could everyone let me know if they can hear me through the chat room just by texting in that you can hear just to confirm? Awesome. Thanks, guys. All right. So let's jump into uh, <laughs> Let's jump into the speakers for today. Uh, my name is Brady Gentile. Uh, I'm a product marketer here at Cloudflare. And I'm Sergio Dossi. I'm a product manager here at Cloudflare, responsible for our load balancing and DNS products. So for today's agenda, uh, we're going to review some quick housekeeping information, uh, a brief overview of Cloudflare for folks who may not already be familiar with their solution, an overview of Cloudflare load balancing, along with some new and upcoming functionality. Then we'll dive into uh, a live dashboard configuration demo to show how easy it is to set up load balancing. Uh, we'll take a look at a quick case study from one of our customers and finish up with a live Q&A session. And then we have uh, a quick special announcement at the end of the presentation as well. So for housekeeping, uh, if everyone can stay to the end of the presentation, we'll be sending out slides and a recording. Uh, please feel free to ask questions in the questions chat box in ReadyTalk. We'll triage all questions at the end of the presentation uh, during the live Q&A. And just a reminder that all of the attendees uh, in this session are muted. Uh, so let's get started here. So for folks on our webinar today who aren't familiar with Cloudflare Solution, we're going to take a minute to do a brief overview. Um, and as, as many of you know, Cloudflare has a lot of individual products, but as a whole solution really distills down into sort of three key differentiators uh, that customers uh, have validated that they value in a cloud security vendor. Uh, and those three differentiators are scale, integrated security and performance, and ease of use. So for scale, customers want to ensure that the architecture of the provider makes their cloud solution more resilient and intelligent. Uh, users of cloud security don't want to sacrifice performance for security or vice versa. Uh, and Cloudflare really improves the performance through integrated traffic acceleration uh, and low latency security services. And then for ease of use, um, users can easily and quickly make fine-grained configurations to improve performance and security posture. Even for advanced configurations, um, ease of use helps organizations ensure that they're more agile uh, and also reduce configuration errors, uh, sometimes resulting in security vulnerabilities or accidental downtime. So we'll jump into the scale of Cloudflare's network. Cloudflare has a global AnyCast network uh, consisting of 119 data centers across 58 countries. We serve 10% of the world's internet requests every day, and that accounts to almost 5 million requests a second. Our network, uh, on average, speeds up requests by about 2x. Uh, we have over 7 million websites, applications, and APIs using the Cloudflare network, with 2.5 billion monthly active users accessing those assets and generating over 1.3 trillion page views. So let's get into the integrated security and performance components of Cloudflare. Um, so when we dive into this, the customer's expectations are increasing, and uh, the importance of having uh, talking with different customers across different industry verticals to understand the most common security threats for websites, applications, and APIs. So what we're finding and what industry analysts are uh, validating is that there's three consistent threats. The first is DDoS attacks, uh, which makes a website unavailable due to denial of service, uh, affecting network and application layers. DDoS attacks include DNS floods, UDP amplification, uh, and HTTP floods, and the like. The second is customer data breaches. Uh, this is when sensitive customer data is compromised through a security breach. So this is typically due to brute force login attacks, DNS spoofing, snooping of data in transit, and malicious payload exploits. And then the third threat is malicious bot abuse. So increasingly, we're seeing uh, malicious bot activity and abuse of websites and applications through things like content scraping or checkout fraud, account takeovers, things of that nature. 
and then to move on to some of the performance challenges that we've seen from customers that we've spoken with. Uh, we're seeing that, uh, you know, first, uh, essentially unavailable infrastructure and networks prevent users from accessing websites, applications, and APIs. So the most common reasons for this sort of unavailable applications or websites is typically servers experiencing downtime, uh, visitor traffic overloading the origin infrastructure, and manual disaster recovery or, or in-house load balancing actually failing to, um, to work properly due to errors in configuration. The second is slow loading mobile websites and applications that introduce performance and content delivery constraints. Uh, this hurts the overall user experience and typically these mobile uh, website related issues are due to mobile devices not having uh, an ample amount of compute memory or power. Uh, erratic or slow cellular networks, uh, sometimes throttled by cellular providers, and mobile applications increasingly using APIs, um, which require more trips to the origin infrastructure. And then the third is just generally slow web pages, uh, applications, and APIs due to heavier content or longer distances to the origin. Um, so this is typically a result of heavier complex web pages. Uh, interactive and personalized dynamic content resulting in more trips to the origin infrastructure and globally distributed users sort of requiring uh, longer trips to origin infrastructure. And so from here, um, we're going to jump right into the load balancing overview and I'm going to hand things off to uh, our PM, Sergi. Thanks, Rick. Um, so really when a uh, customer like yourselves are looking at uh, increasing the number of origins that they have, they're looking to solve um, probably one of two problems. So load balancing is designed uh, or multiple origins are purchased to increase performance and availability of a website. And so most of our customers start off with multiple origins in their uh, current point of presence um, or data center or cloud service provider. And what they want to do is allow users to go to multiple origins based off of uh, a number of conditions and hopefully distribute the, uh, the traffic evenly and allow the users to have a consistent, fast, and um, available experience. One of the issues that uh, you may come across when you're distributing across multiple origins is no visibility into what's actually happening at the origin itself. So when an origin goes down, you may be able to send traffic to the others, but it's, it's unclear why that origin goes down or whether the origin went down at all. The second issue that customers are looking to uh, solve is uh, maybe geographic redundancy. So if you're concerned uh, enough about your global user base that you want to have, uh, say, a, uh, in our uh, example on the slide, uh, an East Coast and a Central Asian um, or Indian uh, uh, point of presence, you want to make sure the traffic from the local area is going to the local servers when available. And if necessary, then they'll fail over to your additional infrastructure uh, overseas. <laughs> so now let's talk a little bit about cloud for load balancing. So, the main advantage of cloud for load balancing is that it takes uh, advantage of Cloudflare's anycast network. So all of your users are going to come to Cloudflare first, and Cloudflare will then decide based on your configuration which of your origin pools will send the traffic to. So it's a, it's a two-legged configuration. One is the users are going to come to Cloudflare, will determine whether that traffic is secure and, and um, appropriate for you to receive based off of your policy. And you'll have configured uh, your origin pool or pools where they're located, where um, the actual specific servers are, and what types of traffic you want to send to each one, whether you want to localize traffic through a, um, uh, to the Americas for Americas users, or whether you want to globally distribute that traffic. Throughout this entire time, we will be uh, polling those origin servers with our help checks. So um, as often as once every 15 seconds, all or some of the software points of presence, and this is configurable, will reach out um, via uh, a, a HTTP GET, typically, and um, pull a specific URL of your choosing and uh, look for specific responses of your choosing. And based off of that, we will then decide whether that origin is up or down and notify you via email if you choose.
I also wanted to talk a bit about some new functionality we built into um, load balancing. Uh, this came out earlier this quarter uh, as a request from our customers, and it's our session affinity functionality. What this allows us to do is, is stick a user to an origin so long as that origin is up. And we'll do this via a cookie that we will uh, insert into the user's browser session. Uh, all you have to do is configure a session affinity um, in our web console, which we'll actually show you how to do today. And from that point going forward, uh, users will go to that origin unless that origin goes down, in which case we will fail them over to your secondary or tertiary or uh, fallback. Uh, Last week, we also introduced uh, a new um, configuration option for Cloudflare, and this works with load balancing as well as our, our standard um, uh, reverse proxy products. And this is specific uh, for Kubernetes. Uh, we're calling it our warp ingress controller. And what this allows you to do is replace the Kubernetes ingress controller uh, with one that is pre-configured to um, stand up and look for a Cloudflare, either your load balancer or your standard reverse proxy. Um, and automatically join um, that node or that, that pool uh, when you're standing up new um, services within your Kubernetes cluster. Now, this is uh, deployable both um, within uh, any cloud-based environment, uh, and Warp also supports uh, standard um, uh, non-ingress controllers as well. And lastly, uh, we wanted to talk a bit about uh, a feature that is not yet released. Uh, this will go into beta um, in about a week here. Uh, but all load balancing customers um, next quarter will receive uh, an upgrade to their system that allows them to see their last 30 days of load balancing event logs. So you will still get the email notifications in real time, uh, but you'll be able to log in to your load balancing uh, traffic tab, um, scroll down to the bottom, and see now, for the last 30 days, why did your origin go down? Was the pool still healthy at a specific point in time? And then why? Uh, the error codes will be logged there as well. And you'll be able to search and filter by specific criteria. So for example, if you wanted to see uh, any time a specific origin was down, you'd be able to filter uh, within our system. Now, if you're a current load balancing customer and would like to uh, sign up for the, the preview for this, so uh, beta access, uh, please email me, uh, sergi at cloudflare.com on the screen there, so S-E-R-G-I at cloudflare.com, and we will add you to the list and make it available to you uh, once it's ready to go. So from there, we're actually going to go right into a uh, configuration uh, demo. So we're going to do a very simple uh, load balancing configuration. Um, this is our demo environment. So we'll be going um, and configuring a zone uh, lbdemo.cf, uh, which I already have up in the system um, as, as a single origin today. Uh, we'll be using two origins. I've chosen WordPress just because I wanted you guys to be able to see something <laughs> on the screen. Um, and our friends at DigitalOcean, uh, so these are just WordPress droplets on DigitalOcean. I've configured two prior to um, our webinar here, so one in San Francisco and one in London. And what we will configure um, in um, our, uh, our traffic app is going to be one uh, load balancer for the entire zone. Uh, we will create two pools uh, with the San Francisco pool uh, origin being in one pool and the London origin being in the other. Uh, we'll go ahead and configure those health checks and send myself an email uh, should those pools go down. Um, and then we're actually also going to do some geo routing. So we're going to route Western US and Western Europe traffic to their local uh, and close storage. Give me a brief moment while I share my screen. Okay, great. So um, as you can see, if you're familiar with our uh, interface, I'm actually in the DNS tab today, and you can see that it's just a standard uh, configuration where lbdemo.cf is pointing towards, actually in this case, just my San Francisco origin. And uh, we can look at that today um, and go ahead and refresh that page, and you'll see just down here it'll say Demo US West, which is what I've called my San Francisco origin. So from here, uh, we're going to go into the traffic app, which is where we configure um, the load balancer. And you'll see we have no load balancers configured, but we'll go ahead and just create one. So our load balancer uh, configuration is generally done through a wizard. Uh, it walks you through all five steps on how to configure a load balancer. 
Um, and don't worry about taking notes here. Uh, we also have a uh, KB article that walks through these exact steps for you um, at, to our page. So we're going to go ahead and title the uh, load balancer and call it lbdemo.cf so it'll handle the entire zone. And as I mentioned earlier, um, we're going to configure session affinity. And really, the only thing you need to do to do that is uh, check that button right now. Next, uh, the system will ask me to create origin pools, uh, which we'll go ahead and do. And we'll start with the first one. As I said, we have the San Francisco one, so we'll call that uh, SFO. Um, the server name will be SFO1. And the IP address for the server, number is 192.241.231.141. And we'll save. And so now I have uh, one pool with um, one origin. And I'm going to add that second pool now and create an origin pool there. And we'll call this one LHR. And we'll enter in our London um, IP address. And hit save. So now we have two origins, um, two pools with one origin each. And you can see that there's actually no uh, status or no health for these origins yet because we've not yet configured the health check. So we'll walk through the next step in the process and it will ask me to attach or configure a health check. So we'll go ahead and do that. We're actually going to create a brand new health check here. And there are a lot of advanced settings that you can choose to do. Uh, we're going to go ahead and leave the, all these at default. So you can uh, specify uh, how often you want to do the health check, uh, the expected codes that need to be returned um, in the response uh, for it to be healthy or not. Here, we're just going to go into standard HTTP health check. I'm going to call this one um, basic health check. Uh, I do recommend that you add a description. This helps you um, organize your health checks later on um, as you uh, use the system. And we'll go ahead and hit next. And here, I'm actually going to have it, um, I'm configured as an enterprise account, so I'm going to have it go from all of our data centers. So every single one of those 119 points of presence will go ahead and um, uh, pull uh, my San Francisco uh, pop here. And the health threshold is one, which means in this case, I only have one origin, so one makes sense. If I have less than one, then this um, origin will be uh, unhealthy. And I'm going to go ahead and put my email address here, so I receive an email uh, anytime this origin goes down. So we'll hit save there. And now you can see it's been attached to SFO. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, add that same health check for LHRI on to configure it again. Save. And new, um, we've attached both health checks to uh, the, the pools and the origins, and we're now we're going to go and configure that geo routing, which is the next step in the process. So for here, I am going to select Western North America, add the region, and configure it and say that Western North America should go to that that pool, and it's as simple as that. I'll now go ahead and add, add Western Europe and tell that to go to the LHR pool. And once again, simple as that. So now I have uh, geo routing configured uh, where Western North America is going to go to SFO and Western Europe is going to go to LHR. And it will give me one more chance here to review all of my configuration. Um, just to reiterate, we have San Francisco as the primary pool. All traffic will go to San Francisco unless San Francisco goes down, in which case we'll go to LHR. We will do health checks, and you can see as they just fired off, and everything is now showing as healthy. And we've had one modification to our policy, which is that no matter what, all traffic in Western North America will go to that SFO pool unless it is down, and all traffic in Western Europe will go to that LHR pool unless it is down. And now we have the option to either save it as a draft, but we'll go ahead and save and deploy here. And now at the bottom of my load balancing screen uh, under the traffic tab, um, I have my configuration that we just put together. So we have lbdemo.cf, which consists of uh, two pools, SFO and LHR, which consists of one origin each. And now um, we can go ahead and once again look at that. We'll refresh this. 
nothing's changed in this environment because I'm actually in San Francisco. So I will be uh, load balanced to that US West server. Um, but I now have um, this geo screenshot um, app. And you can see here, I had it configured to go to London, San Francisco, and New Jersey. And this was done uh, just before we got on. So everything went to US West because there was no load balance configured. I go ahead and recapture. And we'll see. That. Well, the danger of live demos is sometimes things don't go exactly as planned. Let me just make sure that I have that configuration proper here. Now we'll try one more time. Yeah. See if that goes through. No. It does not. Oh. All right, sorry about that. <laughs> With that, we'll jump right back into the presentation. And Brady will talk about one of our customers. All right, so thank you so much, Sergey. That was a great live demo. Um, to dive into one of our customers that's using uh, Cloudflare load balancing, um, the customer Great Rail Journey. It's a vacation e-commerce platform. Uh, they've adopted Cloudflare load balancing solution uh, upon deciding to expand their e-commerce uh, platform globally. Uh, the challenges that they experienced which prompted the need for load balancing are latency issues to delivering dynamic content from origin servers across the globe. Uh, the speed of flight is only so fast. And new origin servers spun up in Chicago and London for them. And so, uh, the Cloudflare load balancing solution ensured their website resilience in the case of origin server downtime due to the automatic failover functionality. Uh, they reduced the latency by geo-routing visitors to the closest origin server uh, based on the request location. And they reduced their bandwidth and improved latency by delivering uh, a majority of their content from uh, Cloudflare's global data center network. Um, to check out the entire case study, you can go to cloudflare.com forward slash case dash studies forward slash great rail journey. Uh, if you go to just our standard case studies page, we have a number of other customers uh, who talk about their experience with load balancing as well. And to wrap things up uh, at the end of the presentation here, uh, we have a list of resources. We'll be emailing out this slide deck uh, in addition to this list of resources, uh, technical blogs, blog posting, introducing you to load balancing, our load balancing product page, the Great Rail Journeys case study, uh, and we'll also include the KB article that Sergey mentioned as well that help you sort of walk through that configuration process of setting up load balancing uh, for yourself. So now it's time for our, our live Q&A session. Um, so we've had a number of questions that have come through throughout the presentation that we've recorded, and uh, we'll get to answering those right now. All right, so first question that came through is how often are health checks made? Sure, so health checks uh, by default are made once a minute. Um, so that's the base level of load balancing. Um, as you saw in the demo, our enterprise customers um, can go down to uh, once every five seconds. Um, and then there are various levels in between um, that are also options. Uh, so anywhere between uh, once a minute and um, <laughs> every five seconds. All right, we've got another question here about session affinity. Um, if session affinity is routed to server one initially, uh, but the next day server two got a lower latency, the cookie is cleared in order to get the faster server. Right, so session affinity will stick to its primary origin for um, uh, effectively one day, uh, and then it will stick to a new origin or possibly the same origin. So the cookie is, is valid for 24 hours. Um, so once we uh, do stick a user to an origin, we will hold them there for 24 hours unless that origin goes down. 
All right, and another question here. Um, if I have a few servers in one data center and wish them to be load balanced through Cloudflare, what will happen if data center, if a data center loses its connection to the internet, will the load balancer be able to recover after the connection uh, is up again? Sure. Um, so what load balancer will do is it'll work just like um, the rest of, of Cloudflare does. So uh, if it can get to one of your origins, it will get to one of your origins. Um, we will continually do those health, those health checks. So. Um, let's say that the entire, all of your origins are, or uh, all of them went down. Um, the longest you would have to wait uh, for us to detect that origin to come back up or any of those origins to come back up and for us to start sending traffic to, to it would be, um, in, in the case, of, if you had 60 second health checks, it would be 59 seconds. So the, the, the next time that we saw it um, pull and come up, we would start sending traffic over to it. Uh, and a, a follow-up, what happens when if all health checks are bad? So if all health checks are bad, uh, it depends on how your, your, the rest of your Cloudflare um, uh, uh, environment is, is held up. So we have some features that will allow us to, to potentially keep a cached version of your site online um, if, if you have that configured. Uh, but uh, more likely, you know, if, the, if all health checks are down and all origins are down, then we'll return um, a website is down. Um, and what if traffic is coming from a region that has not been defined? A region that's not been defined will go to the uh, primary pool. So um, you can configure as much or as few um, uh, geo uh, steering regions as you want. Um, and anything that does not fit a region that you have configured will follow the, fi the primary failover. So in the case of the demo, we had FFO as the primary and LHR as the secondary. So anything not configured. Um, and you can go to that, uh, I still have it configured up and running. So if you're anywhere but um, in Western Europe today, you would go to uh, my SFO origin and you would see on that page SFO. Um, and uh, I, I took that entire thing down. Um, and if you're in Western Europe and you would go to the LHR origin. Okay, so this question is uh, in regards to um, blue-green deployments, and is there a way to configure percentages? So node A gets a certain percentage allocated and node B receives a different percentage. Yeah, um, so the, yes, uh, so to answer that, I, I believe uh, you mean blue-green meaning um, have uh, traffic load balance within um, a set of origins, in which case, yes, that's absolutely true. You just put, if, if I changed my, um, my setup in the demo, to have uh, those two origins in the same pool, then load balancer would just go 50-50 um, between those, the, the SFO and the LHR origin. Um, so the, the way the system is set up is all of the origins within a pool are individually load balanced, so and, and equally distributed, and then the pools are used for failover. Now, the second half of your question is a really good one, um, because we don't do that yet. Uh, so can you configure a origin to have uh, some percentage um, that is different than equal? Um, and uh, that is something that we are working on. Um, we expect to have that shortly, but it is not something that's in the product today. Um, can I have one of the servers dormant and only active if the primary server fails a health check? Um, another good question, and yes. Uh, so that's the way that the primary and secondary pools have. So. Um, if I had deleted in, in the, the demo that I had, if I did not have a geo routing um, configuration, that secondary pool, the LHR pool, would have only gotten traffic if um, the primary was down and failed to help check. Uh, does, is DNS used for load balancing, and is there any risk that some node in the network uh, will cache DNS responses? So this is another really great question. Um, so we actually function in two modes for load balancing. Um, so. Uh, the, the demo that we showed today is what we call orange cloud mode, or, or the, the way that we prefer to have your traffic, which is a full reverse proxy, in which case, no, there is no, um, you know, we're, we're responding with DNS, but each time it'll be, uh, it'll be based off of the, the actual health of those servers. Um, we do have uh, the ability to do gray cloud load balancing, which um, we're uh, now not proxying your traffic and just sending it directly to the origin, and that is all DNS based, in which case, yes, there is a potential for a TTL link to do that. Um, can I move a subdomain only to Cloudflare for further experiments instead of moving an entire name server? Uh, no one in our company will, uh, yeah, not allow to move a domain onto Cloudflare, but um, they have apps, certain apps are within subdomains 
uh, for the company's main uh, domain. Yeah, so I'd recommend uh, contacting Cloudflare Sales, and they'll see what they can do for you there. Uh, can you route to a single origin based on URL, the idea of being behind a, an admin needing to get to a single origin? So we do not offer that today. Um, it is something that we are looking to offer in the future. Uh, when a request fails, will it be retired to another server if the help check has not been done yet? Uh, good question. Uh, no. So the way the system works today is that um, the routing is done via health check uh, and uh, a failed uh, response from a, uh, a uh, an eyeball request uh, to an origin would not affect the routing. Uh, can I use load balancing for A-B testing? Um, maybe. <laughs> so it, 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 it's, it's a, a bit of a deeper question. Um, you could. Uh, you can. We have. We do have some customers who have. Um, it's set up to be a 50/50, and then they're they're doing um, you know some uh, experiments on on one half versus the other. Uh, really, if you were doing A/B testing, you would probably want uh, what one of the previous questions was asking for, which is the ability to um, uh, to specify a percentage of traffic, which we don't offer yet. But uh, hopefully, we'll we'll have that soon. Uh, is it possible to use this in a strictly failover capacity? So only sending traffic if the main server is down for traffic that's not HTTP, such as like a VPN or voice over IP. So we currently do not support uh, protocols that are that are not HTTP based. So um, you could do it for failover, but not for for additional um, um, additional traffic. Um, these are great questions, by the way, guys. We have a lot of a lot of really good questions that have come through. I think probably the most we've seen in in uh, webinars that we posted. So definitely keep them coming. Um, can you route certain file types to a single origin, such as image images or things of that nature? Uh, not today. Um, I think we already covered that one. Um, so we had a number of questions that uh, came about regarding pricing, and so we can cover sort of the pricing questions right now. Load balancing is available across uh, all of our self-serve plans as well as uh, our enterprise plan. Um, we'll send out a link to sort of the more detailed description of the functionalities that are available across both self-serve and enterprise. But essentially, um, essentially there's a base fee for a self-serve plan. You're going to pay five dollars a month to activate load balancing for up to two origin servers for additional origin servers uh, you pay up in increments of five dollars um, as Sergey mentioned earlier there's a frequency of health checks that change and so depending on how often you want your health checks uh, for self-serve plans uh, the price will incrementally grow based on that um, for the self-serve plans again usage based pricing is there the first five hundred thousand uh, DNS requests are free, and then it's 50 cents per uh, every 500,000 DNS requests after that. Um, the number of health check locations is another usage-based functionality. And then for global uh, load balancing with the geo-routing functionalities, that is for self-serve plans, something that you would enable uh, for a, an additional $10 a month. Um, with an enterprise plan, this is uh, flat rate and, and custom pricing. So you'll work with uh, one of uh, our sales representatives to sort of figure out your specific situation uh, and include that as part of your, your enterprise plan. Um, and again, we'll send out more details for that. I know that uh, it's a lot of information uh, to try and explain over audio, but we'll, we'll send that in email as well. Um, let's see, some more questions that are coming through. Uh, Regions are quite wide, so is there a country-based load balancing? Uh, another uh, really interesting question. We, we've had that uh, asked a few times. Um, wh whoever asked that question, uh, please feel free to reach out to me uh, um, on your specific use case. But I'm, I'm, I am interested in, in, uh, in building out the case to, to go down to um, a, a more granular level for, for geosteering. So uh, again, S-E-R-G-I, Sergi at cloudflare.com. Uh, what is the pool limit, and is there load balancing between pools in the same region? So the pool limit um, does depend on your your plan, um, but uh, I think 
what in general is five pools um, for most of our self-serve customers. Um, and the second half of the question was uh, load balancing between pools in the same within the same region. Between pools in the same region. So um, we, we don't load balance with, with between pools. Uh, we load balance um, within a pool. Uh, the pools are there for failover. So if you wanted to load balance um, with specific uh, within um, origins, then you would put those in the same pool. Uh, another question, is there an option to have a, uh, a fallback, uh, so specific fallback for a specific pool? So it seems it's maybe a specific failover. Um, there actually is. So we have uh, the concept of a fallback pool for all um, pools. Um, so you can actually uh, nominate one of your pools as that fallback pool. Uh, that's done via the API. <laughs> So um, that's a more of uh, an advanced configuration, that, but the documentation does exist on, on cloudflare.com uh, and our KBs to, to, to nominate a fallback pool. Um, can, you, can you route by request type, such as Git versus post? We cannot route by request type. Uh, can I use an external health check with the load balancing? Will it change the pricing? An external health check, that's an interesting one. Um, no, uh, that's, that's not something that we support today. All of our routing decisions are actually done um, via our health checks. Uh, does load balancing have an IP that a non-Cloudflare DNS can point to? Um, it does not have an IP, so we're, we're anycast. Uh, so if you wanted to do um, some, if you wanted to use someone else's DNS, you could CNAME to the host name that you have our load balancer set to. Um, but it would it would need to be the host name, not an IP. Well, our system does not work that way. <laughs> Uh, could you explain how uh, and why we should use configure request headers for a health check? Sure. Um, so the most common thing to, to reason to do a, a request header for a health check is to do a host header. So um, if we if you're doing a health check to um, a, a domain or a zone that is not the one that your your, your load balancer is named, uh, you'll want to put your, your default the actual name or uh, the the actual host that you're going to um, to make sure that that health check works. Um, but otherwise, um, the headers are there for you to uh, form the request in a way that, that um, is appropriate for your origin. So um, it, we would recommend that it's, it's done uh, similar or identical to what your user would see, but we have customers doing all kinds of things with health checks um, that allow them to uh, turn things on or off uh, easier based off of what uh, the way that their origin is. Um, what happens if one of the endpoints is doing a reverse proxy uh, outside of Cloudflare and one is doing a reverse proxy inside of Cloudflare? Don't believe it should matter. Um, as long as we can reach that origin um, from our, uh, uh, our points of presence, it should be fine. Um, and so uh, I think this is in reference to one of the previous questions. Um, so load balancing has a host name that an external DNS can point to. Yeah, so um, I, I'm sorry, I probably should have brought this down a little bit more um, in, the, uh, in the demo, but the very first screen, um, the very first thing that I entered was a host name, and that's what I was calling my load balancer. So that's, that, that is now, you know, when I, um, I called my, my load balancer lbdemo.cf, I basically said that, you know, lbdemo.cf, which is accessible to anyone in the world, is going to hit my load balancer. Um, so uh, if you wanted to have an external DNS point to that, you could just create whatever host name you wanted. Um, that obviously was in, uh, that, that, that exists and, and it was resolvable. Uh, and then you could uh, point to that. Um, so this question is about billing. Since the geo-routing billing uh, takes usage into account, I think in general load balancing is taking usage into account. Is that usage determined before or after sort of a DDoS attack filtering occurs? It'll be after DDoS. So this question, uh, in the demo we created pools per IP can uh, can you create them to a subdomain? Yes. Okay. Um, so pools do not have to be IP, be IP addresses. Uh, in my demo, I was using DigitalOcean, so they were. 
but if you have a um, a, a, uh, a subdomain there, um, as long as that's resolvable to Cloudflare, that is acceptable as a uh, as an origin. Awesome. All right, these are excellent questions, everyone. Um, as always, if you have any other questions about load, load balancing, please feel free to reach out uh, to Cloudflare directly. We're more than happy to talk with you, uh, help you with configuration. Um, so feel, feel free to reach back out. Um, in terms of our, our special note for the end of the presentation, uh, so before you leave, we'd like to take a moment to talk about something important to Cloudflare's mission of building a better internet. Uh, in the U.S., the FCC is voting to strike down net neutrality this Thursday, December 14th. Uh, Battle for the Net, in partnership with Cloudflare's App Store, is actually available for installation on your website. And so the app uh, actually adds a pop-up which directly, directly connects users to their respective U.S. Congress people so they can articulate their stance for net neutrality. Using the Cloudflare App Store, you can quickly preview and install this application on your website to inform visitors on how to take action. To install, visit cloudflare.com forward slash apps and search for Battle for the Net. And you can check that out there. I uh, want to thank everyone again for joining this webinar and wish you all a great rest of your day.